you think? A couple ideas are going through my head. So one of the things that's tripping me up is the fact that his boots were found, what they say, half mile away from his rest of his gear. It was, they said, they said a couple different things. When you look at the gear list, I'll pull this thing up again. Yeah. They have two different notes. The following were found several hundred yards from the tent site. Yeah. And that's his boots. And then right below it, the following was found a couple hundred yards from the tent site. That was his gloves. Okay. So that you could leave open to interpretation. I'd say several means at least 300 yards. I do know that we were warned about this in Glacier, that the deer there will actually, like, if you have, like, leave your sweaty boots outside overnight, the deer will actually come into your camp and pick your boots up and take them. Oh, because of the salt? Because like they the like salt. licking it? Yeah, so like they recommend that you don't leave your yeah that marmots stinky. Uh, they said marmots do that too. So you know maybe because uh, the first thing I'm thinking of is he somehow what got like sucked into the water and drowned, and okay. his body was washed out to sea. Okay. Um, just because obviously, like I mentioned earlier on, the tides can change dramatically in this part of the uh, Alaska, and. Maybe it was a you know warmer day out or something, and he went for a swim. Maybe he got done hiking all day, and uh, he decided to go for a quick little swim to cool down, or you know, or who knows what he was doing. But he got into the water and somehow couldn't get back to shore and ended up drowning. Okay, which is why they would have never found his body, and there was no sign of an animal attack. So I'll reread this. Okay, just cause because yeah. I thought that too. The observation showed a high tide debris line at the base of the tent. Yeah. We called out but received no answer. At that time, we zipped open the tent and observed a sleeping bag laid out on a blue foam pad and green felty, felty backpack laying beside sleeping bag. So all of his sleeping stuff was laid out perfectly in the tent. And yeah. The tent had the debris line go up to it but not over it. Yeah. So. Okay. I mean, so I think one theory is he drowned somehow, which is why they didn't find the body. Um, the Finding the boots and everything farther away, it like if he had gone for a swim, you would have left your boots near the shore. Like you leave your clothes right by where you're going into the water. You yeah, like, and take I don't think he's swimming yards. in that water. No, it's probably freezing. Yeah, um, it's probably freezing all year round. Yeah. So I mean, I think with this much water around and the issue with tides, I think drowning is a possibility. Um, I would say something like he got caught in some bad weather, got wet. And suffered from hypothermia and started taking stuff off as he was walking away from camp, but that doesn't that theory doesn't line up with me because there was food left out and things like salami, and it was untouched yet. So that leads me to think that he disappeared pretty recently before the rangers came to his campsite. So what could it be? I mean, there's a very high probability of. Um, he could have been attacked by an animal, but like the rangers said, they found no evidence of a struggle. Um, you know, a bear attack is a, a messy ordeal, and there would be evidence of that, and uh, they didn't find any of that. And it's a very strange note that they made the mention of no wildlife in the area. Though know, this reminds me of the um, that old guy in New York, that the hunter that went missing. Um, remember that case? From a few years ago, uh, I can't think of the guy's name. But Vaguely, I'm remembering it. When the FBI showed up, yep, they and, showed up, yeah, they showed up. No, I don't know where. Wouldn't answer any questions. Yeah, and it, it, people they made uh, people on the search made the made the point to mention that it seemed very odd in the forest that day. There was, it was like all the animals had disappeared in the area he went missing. Yes, yeah, you remember okay, that? Now? Yep, I, yep, that that triggered it for me. Tom Messick. Yep, that's the guy. Okay, that's the case. If you, you have a listened. great memory, good for you. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had that memory. Uh, well, and if you're listening to this you, and you haven't heard that episode, go back. It's what episode our, number is it? I, that I don't take know. a guess. Eight. Okay. Um, Twelve. I don't know. It was one of our earlier episodes. Yep. Um, but in that case, they the people in the search made a point to mention that it it was very odd that day that it was like the forest was scrubbed of animals. This kind of reminds me of the same thing where. Um, you know, Alaska is teeming with wildlife. Dude, it's episode 12. Episode 12, I you got it. You said it. It was your time. second guess? You yeah. said eight? Nah, I think it's 12. <laughs> Look at you. Holy cow. Um, so, episode 12, Tom Messick. Check it out. Yeah. So I find it very strange that they made... It was big enough of a 
issue that they made a mention that it was like the animals are staying well, away from that's this the campsite. Thing. You have people that know the area are experts that they notice something different that weirded them out. Yeah. That they made mention of it. I mean, I in think Glacier, we had deer trailing us off the trail even. I mean, there's yeah. so much wildlife in these parks. That is very odd to well, me. Well, that's, so. that's the thing. It's it's not like a visitor saying it. It's a guy who works is like, yeah, there's no animals here. How is the food yeah. staying out? And they're like, how is it staying out overnight? And to me, it's like it could have been four or five days maybe. So the only thing I can think of that makes sense to me other than, you know, somehow he drowned is um, – he had a second pair of boots with him and he went on a hike, a day hike and something happened. As we know, this is very rugged terrain. Once you get away from the coastline and it's very thick, like if you go missing in some of this vegetation, you're never going to be found. I mean, yeah. it's that thick. And I'm wondering if maybe he went, maybe he like got some stuff out to eat and he's like, I'm going to go do a, I mean, that doesn't sound like something he would do if he's trained in wilderness survival because everyone knows not to just leave food laying about mm -hmm. in your campsite. Uh, but maybe he went on a day hike and uh, fell. And there's no trails around here, so he'd have to be kind of, you know, stomping through the the brush. Yeah, so here's um, – I'm looking at the gear list, just kind of like what you said of, like, yeah. how much stuff he had. Um, so – it says the following items were found in his Kelty frame backpack. Uh, mothballs, tent stakes, cords, uh, AA batteries, gaiters, shoestrings, cord, flashlight, uh, fragment of Kodak film box, uh, stuff sack, handy wipes, tent stakes, cord, bits of cellophane and paper. So he had a fully packed pack. Yeah. Rain gear, jacket, pants. A hat, a camouflage hat, shoes. So there were shoes in there too. Yeah. Trowel, plastic bags with clothes inside. Uh, so he had this thing all packed up. So it sounds uh, like an empty film disc. Yeah. And it's, I'm not seeing camera on here. I'd be interested to see if like the camera it, was gone. It sounds like he had all his gear in his campsite. So that theory of him going out for a day hike, you'd unless he had even more stuff with him. Um, well, I mean, you come in by plane and boat. You're not. You don't have to carry all of it. Yeah. You're unloading it, building your base camp up, and then you so can, you can the, bring more stuff. I exactly. Mean, this is. I mean, this is way more stuff than any one person could carry if they. Have and to obviously, hike these it. rangers meticulously detailed out the list. In reality, it's probably if you looked at the volume of this stuff. I mean. It, oh yeah, cellophane paper, and I mean, it's not going to take up a lot of space. Yeah, you could have of most of this stuff in one pocket, probably. Yeah, like yeah, moleskin, plugs, moleskin, moleskin earplugs, film, matches, sunglasses, gloves. That could all be in one tiny pocket. I mean, if you took apart my first aid kit, you would have forty items on this list. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, it, it maybe it's not that much stuff, but nothing makes sense with this one. Did so? I guess in my head, the theories I've got that seem the most plausible is drowning. I think that close to water, something happened where he fell in, mm -hmm. and it's probably so cold, maybe it shocked his system. I mean, he was only 36 years old, so we know he had a bad knee, but we don't know anything else about his health. So, I mean, <laughs> anything's possible. Maybe he, the shock of the cold water falling in, he had a heart attack or something. And, okay. Um, I You're think full on drowning. You think there's some sort of incident where I would say foul play, but I mean the chances of running into somebody, let alone somebody that's going to kill you in this yeah. part of the park. It's not like people are going to be in this part of the park doing like illegal activities. It's yeah, too remote. You need to take a float plane to get there. Yeah, that's not like the most convenient if you're growing drugs. And so I foul play. I'm kind of ruling out unless there's some crazy person living out there, which I yeah. guess could. I think animal attack is a possibility, but there's no evidence of it. Um, it's very odd to me that the food was left untouched. Um, I don't know. Suicide definitely. So hear me out on this theory. Okay. I, I pro I'll try not to interrupt. You, I, <laughs> I've, I, for a couple years, I watched that show on the history channel alone. You ever remember that show alone alone? I haven't had cable in like 15 years. So, so no. <laughs> the premise of the show is, uh, they have like 10 people and they, they drop all of them off. In oh, very, do they hold their own cameras? Yeah. Okay, I do. And remember the person that, yeah. who survives the longest before tapping out wins like a hundred grand or something. Okay. And watching that show, it's amazing how quickly some people lose it when they're by themselves, like alone and secluded. Like some people on the show were able to go months on their own. 
like okay. just fine. Their mental health is fine. And other people after like five or six days are kind of starting to go crazy. So did uh, O'Keefe, you know, he's out here for two weeks, completely by himself, secluded. It doesn't appear like anything happened to him or his campsite based on, you know, the orderly fashion of the, the gear. Yeah. Did he have like a mental breakdown because of the seclusion and go crazy and just wander off into the woods or go and kill himself or do something irrational um, because of the fact that he was out here by himself? You know, and some people just, I mean, that's why like NASA does those studies, long term uh, space flight studies where they go to like the desert in Arizona and they lock people in like a mock space station for a year. Yeah. They want to study how, like, just how they react, how people react confined in a closed space, like together for a year. Some people just, not everyone's cut out for long term space flight because some people just go crazy, yeah, and like would murder everyone else. Like, okay, saying it, watching no, it alone, I, I, yeah. So I wonder if the seclusion got to him, and even in the short period of time, two weeks, he went crazy and just, just like ripped his boots off and just like walked into the woods, and okay. no one found him again. I um what do you think happened? I don't know. And this yeah. is this is why this really been bugging me cuz like I researched the case so I like I watched some YouTube videos about it about people that covered it. I read through the reports and stuff yeah. and nothing stood out to me. Yeah. As a possibility outside of kind of what you said I'm like maybe he went on a day hike and got injured, but all the stuff that you would bring like his, his camera like shoot, like all the bag stuff is not there. Yeah, and then he had like under an alder bush, like a couple things, and then like the stuff that was strewn about. And I'm like, okay, even like that stuff aside, pretend that stuff that doesn't exist. Yeah, everything's at the site, and from what it appears, this is my assumption. I have nothing to back this up other than what it seems like. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of food left over. Yeah, so that told me I'm like, did he start setting up camp and get whatever happened to him early on in the trip? Yeah. Or was his tent down there and everything laid out because he was packing up? You yeah. know, when you pack up, you just want to you want to lay everything out lay it, so you can pack it properly. Exactly. Yeah. So like it, I and I was like, okay, was that him laying everything out, or was that him laying it out prior to setting up base camp? You can go either way. Yeah, it's a big window of time with no contact. Yep. So, and they have no no natural areas to search. Like in a, most parks. If you're at a campsite, there's going to be a trail next to the campsite exactly. that maybe does a loop or it's an in and out or something. That's a good starting point. If a tent's here and they're missing, well, we're going to start searching the trail. Yeah. And fan out from there. Yeah. And anytime you're in like something like uh, Bureau of Land Management man, land where they're just, it's just open. On a t- it's just open. You yeah. can kind of go where you want. That's where it's, it's hard to determine. I never thought of the drowning thing. I don't think he was sleeping and caught up in it, but maybe he went to like take a bath or something. That's and, what I'm. And maybe I mean, like was in too long and got. Maybe he ate some shellfish. Like, <laughs> like seriously, like what? Yeah. Or those uh, berries, the bane berry. Exactly. Like, yeah. is there something he just made a simple mistake? And in Alaska, you can't make mistakes, especially by yourself. Like, or if he went hiking with just shoes on, maybe he went to go. Wasn't going to be a day hike. Maybe he went a couple hundred yards away. And, and the thing about cold water, like, I'm assuming, I don't know, I'm assuming this water is really cold. And I don't know if anyone's ever, like, gone swimming. I'll, in, I'll like, start looking it up while you're talking. Incredibly cold, like, glacier water. And your body almost, like, it's there's a shock when you get in. But then your body oh, yeah, I've almost kind of goes. I've done the, the goes, January 1st dives in Lake Michigan. Yeah. You, I can only be in there for a few seconds. Or, but your, your body almost kind of starts to go numb from the cold. Oh yeah. And if he went into the water, like Joe said to, um, maybe bathe or maybe he got close to the shore and slipped and fell in. And I mean, it wouldn't take long for you to get, you know, hypothermic in that kind of water. Uh, Joe right now, for those uh, listening is trying to look up what the water temperature is in glacier. Today it was 40 degrees. That's, that's very cold. Very cold. Um, yeah, I think, I think drowning is a very, I don't know how the circumstance could come about other than, like you said, maybe he, he's like, I'm going to take a quick, quick dip. Or maybe it was the end of the trip and he's like, ah, one, I'm going to go take a quick, like, like a polar bear plunge into the water real quick by myself to like, you know, the trip's done and to celebrate being out of there and like the quick, brisk, brisk nature of the cold water. 
but he underestimated how quickly you can become hypothermic in it. And, uh, you like, even in that kind of cold water, like you, even trying to tread water, you like your legs kind of start to stop working even. Yeah. I mean, it looks like the, on average, the hottest it gets is 57 degrees. And that is in July, 14 so degrees Celsius. He was is there like in the what, peak. September. What's the range? October, September peaks 13 Celsius to 11 Celsius. So it's cold. It was five, five degrees Celsius today, which was yeah. what we say that was 40 degrees. Yeah. So it's like upper forties on average can when he you, was there. Can you Google how quickly you can become hypothermic in cold water? I, out of curiosity, um, yeah. I think, I think the two theories I'm going to hang my hat on while you're, you're Googling this is, um, all right. At a water temperature of 32.5 degrees, death may occur in under 15 to 45 minutes. There you go. At a water temperature of 32 <laughs> to 40 degrees, death may occur in 30 to 90 minutes. At a water, all right, so let's do 40 to 50. Yeah. An hour and three, one to three hours. Now that is one to three hours in the water. And that's one to three hours in the water, yeah. assuming that you can come out and warm up. When you're in a tent, like you don't have a lot of time to warm up when you're yeah. coming out. Yeah. So, um, I I do think that potentially water played a role in his. Uh... <laughs> they won't be able to pick up on this one. Um, I definitely think that water could have played a role in his demise. Um, I'm starting to agree with you. I never even thought about that. I think the other possibility is he did, uh, due to the seclusion and isolation of being this far away from. Uh, civilization that he went crazy and ran off into the woods and uh you know i could totally see that especially after watching that show alone i mean some of these people did not make it long and they just started getting goofy in the head and uh maybe that led him eating you know he ate some shellfish or um so i think those are the two my two theories i'm just because nothing makes sense with this one. It's, I, I would lean more towards something in the water. Like he went to bathe in the water and was in too long. Yeah. Couldn't get out. He had a medical emergency even, from the well, shock of the cold. And even then, if even if he got out, what would you do? You'd go to your tent to warm up. Yeah. So then he would die in there. And they or maybe he him. went into the water and dropped something that he had brought with and then went. Because that in the boundary waters, I dropped my GoPro in the water and had to go swimming for it. And it uh, was the, the, freezing. Yeah. And they said tides <laughs> come quick. Yeah. Maybe he got in, high tide came in, like he froze up and then swept out with the tide. Yeah. I think I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. I just think being that close to water and in all of the search and rescue documents, they made no mention of like actually searching the the underwater area. Not that I mean if there's tides that are they, that yeah, strong, it they, would just wisp you out the sea anyways. Exactly. Which might be why his body never was found. But um I think a close second for me is the going crazy. Due to the isolation. I don't think that one at all. No? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm with you on the water. Yeah. I think, I think he eats something in water. It makes the most sense. Yeah. I mean, with that much water and his tent literally was up to the tide line, I mean, that would make the most sense to me. But otherwise aliens. Otherwise aliens. <laughs> could always be aliens. It could, all, it could be aliens. You never know. So... Uh